welcome back to the Complexity Science Online Tutorial Series. This tutorial series is presented to you by AC4, the Advanced Consortium on Cooperation, Conflict and Complexity, at the Earth Institute, Columbia University. So far we have seen how complex systems are different from complicated ones. We saw that they have unique behaviors and special internal dynamics such as emerging self-organization, nonlinear causality and unintended consequences. This seventh model will focus on another key attribute of complex systems, feedback loops. Feedback loops represent the ways in which the parts of the system influence each other. In this module we will see how the idea of feedback loops helps us to understand how our money grows in our savings account, why a herd of animals stampedes, and at a more humorous level, why the chicken population doesn't grow out of control. We will then consider a serious social and health issue, obesity and see how feedback loops helps us understand the obesity problem not as a simple cause and effect problem, but as a complex system with many many contributing influences interacting with, reinforcing and balancing each other. It's easy to think about the single elements that make up a system, for example individual members in a herd of animals. However, when we think about complex systems and how they work, we need to think about the nature of the interaction between the different parts of the system. In complex system, a reciprocal influence between elements of the system is called the feedback loop, an action that has an effect. The effect, in turn, is fed back and influenced the original action. This may seem a little confusing, so let's look at how our money grows in a savings account. When we save money in the bank, the amount of money we have will grow as the bank pays us interest. We start with having a certain amount of money in the bank. The bank then pays us interest on that money. increasing the original amount of money that we had in the bank. The mutual impact continues and the bank pays us interests on the original amount plus the interest that already paid, increasing the amount of money in our account even further. This is an example of a positive or reinforcing feedback loop, as indicated by the plus signs. The stampede is another example of positive or reinforcing feedback loop in action. In this case, the diagram of this loop includes a number of running animals and a level of panic in the group. The stampede starts with a single animal running, which triggers a panic in the others, causing more animals to run and so on. As time progresses, the panic spreads to even more members of the herd, increasing the number of running animals even more. This positive feedback loop is also called a reinforcing loop, where the parts of the system composing the loop reinforce each other, resulting in a mutual growth, a stampede, or mutual decline when the herd slows down and the panic subsides. This is how a dynamic of the positive feedback loop looks over time. Positive reinforcing feedback loops will increase or decrease the system's behavior faster and faster in an escalating or declining trend. This dynamic may be familiar to you from module 5 where we saw the nonlinear behavior of complex systems. These dynamics are also the reason that in some contexts a reinforcing feedback loop may be referred to as a vicious circle because it can create a dynamic which is hard to stop very much like a stampede. A thermostat is an example of a second type of feedback loop that is called negative feedback loop. It is also known as a balancing or inhibiting feedback loop because an increase in one element triggers a decrease in the other, or vice versa. We start with the temperature of the room and set up a desired target temperature. Then the thermostat detects a gap between the desired temperature and the actual temperature. The thermostat then triggers hot or cold air to be added to the room. When the target temperature is reached and a gap no longer exists, the thermostat turns off the furnace or the air conditioner. The dynamics created by a negative or balancing feedback loops will eventually send the system towards a state of equilibrium. Very much like achieving of a desired temperature in a room controlled by a thermostat. Let's move from looking at one single feedback loop to a situation involving multiple interacting feedback loops. Here is a more dynamic and humorous example where both a positive and a negative feedback loops are intertwined. We can look at the chicken population trend through the concept of feedback loops. First on the left side is a positive feedback loop linking the number of chicken with the number of eggs. The dynamic here is that as more chicken lay more eggs, more eggs hatch, which means that there will be more chicken that will lay even more eggs increasing the chicken population. However, on the right side of the diagram, a balancing feedback loop is at work. This feedback loop helps balance the chicken population, because as more chickens are born, there are more chickens trying to cross the road, 
but more road crossing attempts mean that more chicken will die, reducing the number of chickens. This helps us understand the broader dynamic and why the chicken population doesn't continue to increase without any limit. For a more serious example, let's look at the system map of factors that influence obesity, created by the UK Government Office for Science. What causes obesity then and how we can address it? Is obesity caused by the food we eat? Or the policies that govern the food industry? Or maybe our sportive way of life? The example we give our children. In a complex system, multiple feedback loops are at work, as multiple parts of the system interact. And unlike the previous example, feedback loops in complex systems will typically have more than two components within them and will be interacting with multiple other feedback loops across the system. Over 300 experts from a wide range of disciplines found that the influences on obesity rates were clustered by factors such as individual psychology, social influences, and individual physical activity. By looking at each cluster in the map, we can see where different elements interact, forming both reinforcing and balancing feedback loops. For example, if we just look at one cluster, we can better understand how elements interact with each other in this complex system and see opportunities to engage in the system to support reduction of obesity. The cluster titled Individual Physical Activity, we can trace the elements and the nature of their interaction. As parents increasingly model activity for their children, children learn more activity patterns in early childhood. This increases the value of being active and the level of recreational activity, increasing the overall physical activity. Increasing overall activity in turn reinforces and increases the parents' modeling activity for their children, and thus closing the interaction between all of these elements into a positive or a reinforcing feedback loop. Recapturing the learning from this model, we can say that feedback loops are what describe the interactions between parts of a complex system. There are positive and negative feedback loops. Any combination and number of them is possible in a complex system. The interactions between the system's elements through feedback loops influences the overall behavior and dynamics of a system over time. These are the online sources that we use to create this module. In the following models of this series, we will explore more of the unique attributes of complex systems, like attractors, networks, and multi-level hierarchies. These concepts will be easier to grasp now when one has a basic understanding of feedback loop processes. Thank you for watching.